So good evening, good evening, good evening. We are back again. We're going to talk about Spursy. Uh, it's proper Spursy. Uh, Spursy are looking to sign Dominic Solanke, according to Fabrizio Raman. Uh, but we're going to talk about Pedro Neto as well. Uh, Eze as well. Um, Tottenham have had a slow transfer window, pretty much like everybody. Everyone's kind of longing this out until the last couple of weeks of the window, by the looks of it. Um, as it stands, as I record this, it is the 2nd of August where I am. Um, and the window shuts in, what, 28 days? Going well, isn't it? 28 days. Uh, Man City have signed Savio. Arsenal have signed a goalkeeper. Um, and the centre-back stroke, left-back, the Maldini regen. Um, on the verge of signing Moreno, by the looks of it. Uh, Liverpool signed absolutely nobody. <laughs> Chelsea have signed a billion kids from the South American countries. And um, yeah, Man United have signed uh, Yoro, who's now out for three months, and Xerxes. Um, that's about it. Um, it's got to be one of the worst transfer windows, if not the worst transfer window, summer window, I've seen for many, many years. And um, I don't know why I put that down to. Everyone's talking about the PSR, the FFP, all of this stuff. These are not new things. You know, these are things that have been in place for many, many years. So is this a case of everybody's mismanaged their money? Is this a case of they've put players on too much money so they can't get rid? Because if you look at some of the players that Tottenham have got that football club, yes, they got rid of Hoyland. Not Hoyland. Flipping out. They got rid of Hoiberg. He's gone. Um, it looks like Emerson Royale is going to AC Milan. So it's not been a great window from Tottenham. And, and this is why I always get on Tottenham's case. Listen, I do it with my own club as well. You know, these clubs are just happy to be in and around the top four. As long as they get the top four spots in and around the top four, job done, which is why Man City keep cleaning up. But before we get into talking about the actual players, uh, stick a thumbs up on the video. Um, check out the um, the fan cams on the channel, the other channel, from yesterday when Arsenal lost in a pre-season friendly to Liverpool. Uh, very, very disappointing performance. A bit of a, bit of a throwback to last season, really. Um, same old, same old. But yeah, check out my fan cam. Check out Jez's fan cam. And um, I'll be back tomorrow on here and on the main and i'm live with rants as well um so yeah check all of that out um also make sure you are subbing to the channel that'd be fantastic and uh, make sure you stick your comments down below but let's start with pedro neto uh, a player that i think personally i don't know what you guys think i personally think he's the best winger in the league now people are going to raise an eyebrow that saying what about salary he gets loads of goals what about saka he gets loads of he gets loads of ga this guy is technically the best winger in the league yeah, he's direct, he's left foot, he's right foot, he can play all across the, the front line, um, he's quick. The only downside is that he's, um, that he's obviously had a, a couple of major big injuries, which is why I don't feel so many clubs have gone in for him. But listen, this guy is absolutely class. And um, Tottenham are on the verge, according to all the reports that are out there, um, from these puppet journalists. Um, so you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. However... If you are to believe them, which a lot of people do, uh, they are on the verge of agreeing personal terms with him. And I do think that Wolves will sell him, which is why I'm fuming that Arsenal ain't gone in for him. Uh, maybe we will. Maybe we'll hijack the deal. Uh, who knows? Uh, but last season, um, he only bagged three goals. He got 11 assists, 24 appearances across all competitions. But he was out for four months with a hamstring injury. And that was after coming back from a big injury. And it's like, this is the problem when a player has big injuries. They never fully recover. They might stay fit for three, four months. They might look explosive again, but then they'll do another little injury and it'll be to a hamstring. Then the next one will be a groin injury. Yeah, then it'll be a metatarsal. Then it'll be this and then it'll be that. And all of a sudden their body's just breaking down. And the thing is with Pedro Neto, he's not even that old. He's, um, it's a shame how it's gone for him because he is um, a player that if he had stayed fit, yeah, I think that, we wouldn't even be discussing. It wouldn't even be a debate as to whether he's the uh, the best winger in the league. It's only 24, just turned 24 recently. But he's lost, what, two, two and a half years of his career through injuries. And this is the problem. Will Spurs take the plunge? Because it's going to cost over 50 million to get him. We know Spurs have got the money. They're one of the, um, the richest clubs in the league. Obviously, Daniel Levy, he's frugal. He's a frugal businessman. Uh, that just basically means he's a tight prat. Uh, and he is the single biggest problem at your football club. Um, however, a close second is the fan base. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Because 
they panned it down to anything that's fashionable at the time. You know, Timo Werner's obviously come in. People are lapping that one up. Um, Tottenham has signed Min Hayuk Yang. Um, I've never seen him play, so I can't comment on that. Uh, maybe some of you Spursies have. I don't know. Uh, but the club's pursuit for now indicates their intent to strengthen the squad, according to this report, and add more attacking options. This addition could provide a significant boost to their attack as they prepare for the upcoming season. Now, listen, if they sign him, I'm going to be pissed off because they've already got one of my ballers there in uh, Madders. Um, they're looking at him. They did have a little look at... Um, I did have a little look at Ivan Tony, but Fabrizio has posted out today, what, a couple of hours back? Exclusive Tottenham Explore move for Dominic Solanke. He's among the targets for Spurs. Difficult deal as he's a key player for Bournemouth. Um, well, I disagree that that's a difficult deal, by the way, because whether he's a key player for Bournemouth or not, Spurs are a bigger club than Bournemouth. And Spurs have got more money than Bournemouth. So, ego, we're going to dangle you £55 million and you're taking it, bitch. That's how it should be. Whether it happens like that, who knows? Who knows? Uh, no formal bid to Bournemouth so far, but Spurs are exploring the options to bring in a new striker and potentially a new winger based on the opportunities out there. So Fabrizio's kind of dangling a carrot himself, isn't he? He's telling you, he's saying a lot without saying a lot. And this is the problem I have with these journalists, because especially him and Ornstein, yeah, he obviously gets a lot of his information from player agents, whereas Ornstein gets it from the football club. And this is why they can't be trusted on a lot of things. And, and then all the other ones, yeah, they're all trying to be little mini Ornsteins and little mini Fabrizios. Then you have the clickbait merchants on, on Twitter, the copy and paste merchants. They don't bother retweeting these people. They just take their quotes and then tag them in the hope that they retweet them. So then they can boost their following. Then you have all the clickbait merchants on YouTube yeah, that will absolutely maximize whatever they can to get their followers up. Yeah, by putting Fabrizio's name in a title, yeah, putting his face on the um, on the thumbnail and saying, oh, my God, this is amazing. Yeah, OK, cool. Whatever, mate. Uh, is Dominic Solanke an amazing signing? Uh, for my club, no. However, um, he is saying different. For Tottenham, is he better than Richarlison? Because that's probably not the benchmark because Richarlison's trash. However, um, it should be a consideration is he better than what we've got? That's how it should be. And that's how I look at it with my club. Is this signing going to be better than what we've got? Because when people want to sit there and talk about, oh, we need squad players. No, you need players to come in and actively try and take the first team spot. So then the first team players become the squad players, the bench players. And then you have rotation. Then you can compete in all the competitions rather than just having your 11 and a couple of decent ones on the bench. Because as soon as you get two or three injuries, like Tottenham did last season, all of a sudden they went from top of the table to down here real quick because they didn't do what was required in the last window. January, they did nothing, as far as I'm aware. Um, I may be wrong. If I am, correct me in the comments. And um, and then this summer, they ain't really done a lot. They, they obviously signed Archie Gray. Um, they've signed um, um, the young lad that I've never heard of. And, um, and yeah, <laughs> it's not looking great, is it? They've signed Timo Werner. Uh, again, why? I mean, he hardly ripped up any trees, did he? Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, and then you've signed him again. It's a bit of a weird one. It's a bit of a weird one for me. But listen, as for Dominic Solanke, he gives you something different. He's not a great player, in my opinion. But he's a different option to have up front, which is why I'd probably take him at Arsenal. Because, let's be real, he scored more goals last season than Jesus will ever score in a, in a season. He scored more than Eddie Nketiah will ever score in his life. In fact, I think he scored more Premier League goals last season. How many did he score last season? How many did Solanke score last season? I think it was 19, wasn't it? Yeah, 19. Eddie and Kate have scored 19 Premier League goals in seven years. So Dominic Solanke scored 19 last season. So on that basis, he's clear, levels clear of Eddie. The season before, he only scored six. The season before was three. So is it just one freak season? Maybe. However... If he goes to a better club with better players um, and a better manager, because although I do kind of like the uh, the Bournemouth manager, I do think Ange is actually a very good manager. The thing with Ange is he's a little bit naive at times. He needs to change it up. But when you lot had injuries last season, yeah, he still kept trying to play the same way. Sometimes you have to accommodate the players you've got in the team and change it up. And that is why Tottenham didn't win anything. Yeah, getting knocked out of the Cups was embarrassing. 
second round to Fulham, and then Mr. Levy, Mr. Levy Club, uh, sitting there the day after in an AGM or a fan forum or whatever it was, telling the telling the fans that they've got their Tottenham back and they all stood up and clapped. Just got knocked out of the cup, mate, the night before. And that's why I have a doubt with Ange at times, because although he's a good manager, yeah, you've got to win something, mate. Yeah, and he can sit there and have the meltdown and this ain't what I've expected and this and this and this. Well, after he got knocked out of that cup, he was asked in an interview yeah, um, about cups. And he said, well, we're not just going to go desperate to win one cup. Yeah, we want to have sustained cups. Well, how about nick the cup on the way, mate? How about that? Yeah, because then at the end of the season, he was sitting there saying, well, this, this club's woken me up internally, externally. I've been woke when they played Man City. Yeah, and he went on a little bit of a meltdown. And he looked dejected as if to say this club ain't on my page. And then so far this window, it's been open two months and you've done barely anything. What are you trying to do to, to get in the top four? What are you trying to do to have a title race? What are you trying to do to win some cups next season? Well, leaving the trolley dash till the end. Yeah, Pedro Neto never went to, um, oh, he did go to the Euros, my bad. But they got knocked out kind of early. Why can't you get that deal done? Yeah, Solanke, he didn't go Euros. Why haven't you got that deal done? Ivan Tony obviously did. But why aren't you getting these deals done? This is why I get the on with my club, right? Because... Man City keep winning for the reason that, number one, yes, they've got a very good manager, the best in the world, arguably, with Ancelotti. Um, some would say Pep. I'd personally, I'd personally say Ancelotti, if I'm honest, but I flip and flop on that one. I can't lie. <laughs> but Ancelotti is a, a gangster. I love Ancelotti. But Ancelotti and Pep are the two best managers in world football. So forget Ancelotti. They've got Pep. But why do they keep winning? Because Pep can't kick the ball. Yes, Pep can go mad on the touchline and go mad in the dressing room. But then you look at their players and you go, they've got good players. Yeah, they have got good players. So what are you doing with your football club to try and overtake them? Who's trying to stop Man City right now winning five in a row? Because when I look at Bayern Munich last season, they lost their title for the first time in 12 years. In fact, they didn't win anything for the first time in 12 years. What is their response to that? They've gone out and bought Elise, a player that Tottenham and Arsenal should have gone in for. They've gone and bought Paulinho, another player that Arsenal and Tottenham should have gone in for. They bought another defender who's now out injured, and they bought a few other players. They bought about six players. What about six players? They're actively saying, "Yo, we're getting our title back." What are our football clubs doing to try and overtake Man City? Because all I see is a load of bollocks and waffle and PR and brown envelopes. Yeah, and wannabe journalists, aspiring young journalists, clickbaiting their way through life. Right, that's all I keep seeing. It's embarrassing. Yeah. As for Eze, I want to uh, end on the Eze story. That looks like it's gone a little bit cold. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean it ain't going to happen. Yeah, and let's be real here. Tottenham are bigger than Crystal Palace. Tottenham are bigger than Bournemouth. And Tottenham are bigger than Wolves. So there's no reason that Tottenham can't sign all three of them. In terms of if you go in for them, they're going to want to come to Tottenham, surely. Yeah, playing in a, a better team, yeah, with better managers. What are we doing here? Like Crystal Palace, you can't bully them. What? You can't bully, you can't bully Bournemouth, you can't bully Wolves. Tottenham Hotspur, right? Yes, you ain't won anything for years. Now you've got a manager that has won a lot. Yeah, and you've got money. So why aren't you doing any of this? Still time, of course. There's still time. But at the same time, uh, Tottenham need a lot of work. They need to get some more players out of the club. There's a lot of players at that football club that shouldn't be there. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm not a gambling man. But if I was, I'd say Tottenham are probably sign one out of the three. Yeah, I'm not sure which one. Maybe maybe Solanke. Maybe Solanke. But one out of the three. But let me know your thoughts on all of that. Um, I have I was also a gambling man. I predict Tottenham to win another this season as well. Um, they'll look good in phases and bits and pieces of the season, but ultimately I don't see them winning anything. Uh, but you never know. You never know. Um, it is what it is. But listen, let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Stick a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe. Check out my fan cam from yesterday. Uh, I wasn't happy. Uh, check out um, check out Jez's fan cam as well. And uh, like I said, I'll be back on here tomorrow. Um, I'll try and get two uploads out tomorrow. And um, I'll be on the, the main channel. I'm also doing a show with Rance. In fact, I need to pull that forward, actually, because um, I can't do that time. But um, but yeah, big up to all you lot. And um, listen, we're over, for, um, we're, we're over the 30K bracket. So bless up to all of you lot. Let's push that on to 40 now or 35. And uh, I want it on 50 by the end of this year, by the uh, New Year's Eve. I want this channel on 50K. Loads of watch-alongs coming up as well. Yeah, for anyone who is new around here, yeah, watch-along central. It won't be Arsenal games. That's obviously on my Arsenal channel. Watch-alongs on here. La Liga, Premier League, 
we're going to do the cup um sorry the cup the community shield at the weekend um so yeah keep your eyes peeled plenty of um plenty of um plenty more to go plenty more to go that's not this weekend it's the following weekend my bad uh, the emirates cup will be uh, streamed on the arsenal channel um going to check out some friendlies i think there's some friendlies later this week like over the weekend so i might do some of them stupid o'clock friendlies in america obviously real madrid when the real madrid play actually they're playing an el clasico um real madrid fixtures they are playing the clasico sunday saturday night sunday morning 1 a.m i will be here for that clasico and then wednesday they're playing chelsea so i will be there for that um then we obviously have the community shield then we have real madrid at atlanta in the super cup final so plenty more to go guys plenty more to go but listen bless up for all the support always leave your comments down below sub like share and um and yeah uh let me know what you think about spursy and uh, what you think their plans are for the rest of the window we're out layers ciao